welcome back to the rating climb we're trying to get past the 300 mark here we go and by the way oh my um we might be looking at a scholar's made attempt let's see and by the way it's super hot in our house i'm like sweating it's like 80 degrees in here our ac is in the process of dying i think so we uh we need to get that fixed but in the meantime I'm gonna wear this shirt and we do have a scholar's mate attempt so even if you didn't know what scholar's mate was if you're following kind of the principles that we're we're following at this rating range which is don't get checkmated in one move i should be paying attention to this right so white is clearly trying to do that the question is how do we stop this and you can either block off one of these pieces or you can defend the square okay so queen e7 queen f6 would be good defensive moves or what i'm going to play is g6 and notice the importance of this knight defending this pawn so we don't fall for this trick where we lose our our rook right so this is an important move and now white's probably going to go back here and try again is my guess and then we will do a similar thing and block off the queen a second time And there you go. So again, I'm just paying attention. What did my opponent's last move threaten? And here we are again. Don't want to get checkmated in one move. I'm going to block it off. There's queen b3. It's kind of like the last attempt. Oh, well, that's an attempt too. Okay. <laughs> so they tried it. It didn't work. And we got a quick win. Um... What I was going to say is if they went over here to line up, we would simply play queen e7 and defend uh, is probably the simplest thing. All right, let's go for a new 10-minute game. That was a quick one. All right, and we are black again. A 303 plays d4. All right, so let's go ahead and we'll just mirror the pawn. It's always a solid way to start the game. 290. And e3, okay, I'm just going to develop a piece and not overthink it. Okay, so our opponent plays f4, which is kind of looking like a stonewall setup. So this is a setup where you put your pawns like this, and it's actually really solid. It's really solid because they get a nice clamp on the e5 square. It's very hard for us to break with e5 without just losing a pawn. Um, and even if you try to attack over here, they usually will just defend it with the C pawn. You can't really make a whole lot of progress over there. That being said, I'm not going to really change my strategy too much. I'm going to continue to develop my pieces. Okay, so let's play bishop f5. We'll just get the bishop out somewhere uh, to a useful square. Lining up on this diagonal. Okay, and I'm just going to continue making moves that help me develop my pieces. I want to get this bishop out pawn was in the way so here we go okay and remember what i talked about if you can do multiple things at the same time it's probably a good idea i wanted to develop this bishop anyway bishop to b4 might have been a viable move and now the fact that i can get a pawn for free as well why not right we'll just take it we also have a pin here that white has to deal with uh, we have maybe knight to e4 and so white's position was very solid until until that move right there. Castling looks like a nice move. Developing the knight, maybe even c5 to let out the queen. Just kind of giving myself, okay, good move by our opponent. Defends the knight, blocks the pin, very solid move. So I'm probably not gonna worry about that and I'm just gonna castle. Um, I could have developed the knight, like I mentioned, I could have played maybe c5, but castling looks totally fine, so we'll just castle. Okay, opponent plays h4. So when you see a move like that, there's there's two things that come to my mind. Uh, number one is that they, they want to attack my king, maybe by pushing the pawn all the way down here, or maybe they want to pair this with another pawn push. Now, if they go here right now, I'll just take it, because I have two pieces, and it's only defended one time. But if you could imagine with me that maybe the bishop was sitting there, and they could play g4, I would definitely want to be careful about that because g4 and if i go back then h4 and maybe my bishop gets trapped um i would have to be careful of that okay so just something to keep in mind now because they can't really play g4 right now 
I'm not super concerned, and I think I'm just going to continue with m normal moves. So I'll play c5. And the general rule, if somebody's attacking you on the flank, you want to strike back somewhere in the center. And that's kind of what I'm doing here. Okay, so I could, of course, recapture it. Or I could leave it for now and maybe go on, you know, the offensive with like queen a5 and try to create some pressure here. This looks good. This looks good. Even developing a piece looks good because that pawn's really not going anywhere. Like I could take it pretty much whenever I want. So yeah, maybe I will. Um, maybe I will just develop my knight. That's a really nice looking move. It defends my bishop. It's all my pieces off of the back. Controls some center uh, central squares, and it looks really solid. So yeah, I'm feeling feeling pretty good. And notice white has not finished their development. This is one of the problems with making too many pawn moves at the start of the game. Your pieces end up stuck on the back. Now that's a good move, but. Um, now I can probably play queen a5 like I mentioned before, and I'm starting to get a lot of targets here that white has to be really careful about, right? Very easy for white to lose a piece here if they're not careful. So they do trade it off. That's a pretty simple one for me. I'm just going to recapture. Pretty easy trade. And like I mentioned, this pawn we can basically take whenever we want. Now we've connected our rooks, which is really nice because they defend each other, they help each other, and it gives us maximum options as to where we want to move them and what we want to attack. Okay, so remember what I said, always be looking for checkmates and always be looking at the big pieces. And the reason I played queen a5 was because I was lining up on this knight. Did my opponent defend it? They did not. And so what I'm going to do is simply capture the knight. It's only defended one time. We have two pieces. We're going to take it. When they take us back, we're going to take with the queen. And he did not take his back. Okay, so we have some options here. We could take the bishop or we could take the rook. Which one should I do? Well, uh, that's five points. This is three points. So you might be tempted to say take the rook. But look at that. Our bishop is actually, in a sense, pinned to the queen here if it leaves the diagonal in this direction. And so because of that, I'm not going to take the rook. I'm going to take the bishop. Better to get a free bishop than to take a rook and lose your queen, right? Okay, and opponent didn't notice that the queen was there, so that's a pretty straightforward move. We'll just capture the queen. And now that my queen is close to the king, I'm definitely scanning for checkmates. I don't see any immediately, but I do see an idea. And my idea is I'd like to get my queen in front of the king. Because if you can ever get your queen in front of the king and it's defended, that's checkmate. So what I'm going to do is actually capture this pawn. And then I'm going to bring my knight in, either to here or here, and try to put my queen there. That looks like a pretty simple way to end the game. And if not, if my opponent somehow stops it, well, I still got a free pawn and, you know, didn't weaken my position in any way. So, seems to be fine. Okay, there's a discovered attack on my queen. So I am going to be paying attention to what are the knight moves available? Are there any knight moves that would cause me problems? I don't really see any because all of these knight moves, uh, I could actually just capture it, right, with my queen. So I think that's fine, and I think what I will do is bring my knight forward. I'm just debating which square. It probably doesn't really matter. We'll just go with this one. And I have actually two checkmate threats. This is checkmate, and can you guys find the other one? If you had a chance to look at that, knight to d2 is also checkmate because my queen is cutting across the king here. So I have dual checkmate threats. This one doesn't work because the knight would capture me. But here and here. Pretty difficult for my opponent to stop. Actually, I don't know if they can stop the checkmate at this point. I don't believe they can because it's just simple as moving there, right? So, all right. 298. So this next game, assuming that we win, should put us over 300. Let's play E4. We get E5. Okay, we're just going to develop a piece. Fight for the center, right? Okay, opponent is doing a good job defending. Let's bring out a piece and put it on an aggressive diagonal. Remember, this is a weak square for black at the start of the game. So if you can pair this with a queen or a knight, uh, lots of tactics can open up. So we're going to just kind of get ready for that. It's called the Italian game. 
Knight to f6 is the two knights defense. Okay, so uh, there's two ways we can approach this. We can continue with kind of normal moves. D3, knight c3, castles, bring our bishop out. Or we could play a little bit aggressively here and maybe even go for a fried liver attack. And I think I will because it's a fun opening, especially at lower levels. This is very, very difficult for uh, your opponents to stop, right? And uh, we'll see what black's going to do. The best move is d5. All right. So they they did a great job there and, and they stopped the immediate threat. So we're going to capture the pawn and we are setting up. All right. So the opponent is, is actually uh, playing good moves but they're allowing us to play what's called the fried liver attack. So uh, we have a couple of videos on the channel, but if you haven't seen those, essentially what we're doing is getting a fork. And yes, we're giving up our knight for free. And we got a resignation. Okay, so we, I guess we weren't playing fast enough for our opponent. Um, the reason you give up the knight is because after the king takes, you can play queen f3. You have a fork. You're going to get your piece back unless black decides to go king to e6 to defend it. And yes, they are up a piece temporarily. They have four pieces. We only have three. But the issue is the king is stuck in the center. We're going to castle. We're going to bring a rook over and line it up. We're going to play d4 and knight c3 and bring our bishop out. And it's very, very challenging for black to defend. So it's a, it's a great opening for, I mean, you can play it at the 20, you know, 22, 23, 2400 level if you want. But it's even better at the lower levels. All right, let's play a new game. Now that we have crossed 300, so I'll go ahead and keep going since uh, I've got a little bit more time. And here we go. All right, 305. I actually took a lot longer than I thought it would to, to go from 200 to 300. So, uh, okay, F3. So not the greatest move. Why? Well, because it opens up the king. So I'm going to be paying attention to this. Now, if I go there immediately, uh, it doesn't really do much because black, I mean, white could play g3 and I have to leave and that's not great. I am going to play knight to f6 and I was thinking about potentially sacrificing because once that pawn moves and I go here, there's, there's a tactic where I could follow up with a fork. However, our opponent has defended that. So they did a, a nice job and I'm going to change my strategy and just do something else now. So let's play bishop c5. I want to develop my bishop, and this looks like a great diagonal, especially because this pawn has been moved forward. It's not only weak here, it's also weak back here, right? So you can see how there's lots of things that the bishop is already attacking. Okay, so why it's going to give me a pawn, um, maybe it's a crazy gambit or maybe it's just a blunder. Either way, I'm going to go ahead and take it. It does lure the bishop off of this diagonal, so it's kind of, you know, uh, has a point behind it, you could say. But... Probably not worth it in this case. Yeah, now a3. I'm actually just going to go back because I do like the bishop on this diagonal. I think it gives me lots of options. And so this is a great, I think it's a great place for the bishop to be. This is also a fine, a fine move. Both of them would be good, but I like this one. Okay. Again, uh, you know, I'm just doing some basic math here. One, two, and one. So I'm going to take it. Which way? Well, uh, what do you guys think? Well, if you said with the bishop, I think that's the correct way. Why is that? Because the pawn blocks my own bishop, and I give myself doubled pawns, which are two pawns on the same file, which generally you try to avoid. And this way also lines up over here with a nice pin on the knight. So definitely looks like the obvious move here. And that bishop is just super powerful. And, you know, what what is white doing wrong? Uh, they're not paying attention to their pieces, and what, what am I attacking, right? And so here we go. We have a fork now. And we'll take the rook most likely next move. Okay, so the king comes up. Just scanning if I have any better moves. Um, I don't think so. I think a free rook is, is pretty good. So let's go ahead and take that. And notice, you know, you could say, Nelson, you're not developing. Uh, there are exceptions, right? There's exceptions to every rule in chess. And so, yes, I'm not developing or castling. Why? Because I have these really powerful moves with my bishop that are actually better, right? Like in this case, you could say, oh, you need to castle, you need to develop. Well, my bishop's under attack and I can take a free piece. So I'm going to break the rule for a second here and take the piece, right? Um, and that you see that a lot in chess, right? Like you learn kind of these principles, like generally speaking, do A, B, and C, but then 
wait a second, is this an opportunity to break the rule because I have a better move, right? That's, that's constantly what you should be evaluating as you're playing. So it looks like things are slowing down and it's going to be time again to go ahead and finish development and castling. Wow, king to d3. So you could argue d5 is the best move just to open up and get the queen there. Castling also looks pretty good. Yeah, I think I will play d5 because this is a move I'm going to want to play anyway to develop because it lets my bishop out and fights for the center. But the fact that white's king is there makes it even more appealing and uh, getting my queen open to attack the king seems like really good yeah so here we go it's a fork it's also um an attack on the queen it's a great move you know however you look at it so we will take that and we have the follow-up of potentially taking the queen also taking the knight and i believe this game is going to be over pretty pretty soon okay so yeah we have one two options which one's better uh, there is a little interesting tactic we'll see if our opponent sees it where we will lose our queen um, but it's a tough move to find, but they do have bishop b5 check with a discovered attack on our queen. That's, that's interesting. Now it's still, it's okay. They didn't see it. Uh, I would have probably played queen to d7 and just at least gotten the bishop for it, but, uh, that would have been a nice move for our opponent. Okay. So now I'm looking for checkmates, right? So the king, uh, can almost not move, right? If you look carefully, there's only one square here. So do I have a move that can take away that square and put the king in check without uh, taking away what these pieces are already controlling? And the answer is yes, I do. And the move is bishop to d4. So that looks like a checkmate. And we'll go ahead and play it. All right, so we got five points. We're at 310. Play another game. And here we go. We'll play, yeah, we'll play e4, I guess. Play against the 100. Okay, aborted the game. Try that again. All right, we got a 340, and we're playing as black. Okay, d3. Let's play e5. Get the center, right? Get both pawns in the center if our opponent is going to let us. d3, d4. Okay, so what I like to do, this is basically the Scandinavian defense backwards. Um, I disconnected. I don't think so. No, I'm not disconnected. Um, what I like to do is capture, and when they take with the queen, we gain a tempo with the knight. They are not doing that, and so um, we'll just capture it and go from there. Okay, well, uh, both options look pretty good. This is obviously better point-wise because you're getting a piece, three for one. This is better as far as luring out the king, right? Because this way, white could recapture with the bishop, and the king can actually stay safe and still castle. This way, the king can no longer castle. So they're both very appealing. I think I will go with this one. So here's another example of where I'm not taking as many points as I can. I'm focusing on attacking the king, right? Okay, so how do we want to follow up on a king that's been lured out? Well, uh, queen here, there's g3. Still looks decent. I could come over to d4. Not a bad move at all. Bishop c5, however, looks pretty nice to me. So that's a developing move I would want to play anyway. It's also a check that's very difficult for white to deal with. And so bishop c5 looks like a great move. I'm still keeping this in the back of my mind. Queen e7 in the back of my mind. So if I go here and this happens, what am I going to do? What's my follow up? Don't see anything like immediately. I think just knight f6 and castling looks like the most powerful because then I get the rook involved. Um, this is also good, putting the queen and bishop like this. Um, so that's definitely an idea. I think queen e2 and, and white can maybe stop it. So without wanting to analyze too much, I think the simplest thing, knight to f6. You, you can't go wrong developing a piece to a good square, right? You just can't. So let's just play that. Okay, bishop c4. Um, what was the point? Well, it was developing, but also to castle. And that actually deals with this threat. When somebody attacks f7, a good way to deal with that is a castle. Castle kingside, because now you add a rook there. So you have the rook and the king. So it makes it much more difficult for your opponent to do anything. So I'm going to castle to deal with that. And at the same time, guess what? Now I'm getting ready to put my rook there, followed by my queen. I will have a battery lined up on the king, which is going to be very, very good. Okay. And our opponent blunders the queen, trying to play aggressive and, and attack the king. 
And so, yeah, they, they noticed it, it looks like. All right. Let's, uh, let's see, what time do I have? Yeah, I have a few more minutes. We'll play one or two more games here. We're at 319. Um, let's play Knight of Three just, just to mix it up a little bit. It's still a good move. It's still a developing move that fights for the center. Opponent did not want to play against that. And boarded the game. All right. Try again. Okay. Let's try that one more time. Knight to F3. If you're used to playing against E4 and D4, you might like kind of not like that move. Now we'll play E4. So it's kind of like we just transposed E4, Knight F3. So I'm, I'm ready to play D4 and get both of those pawns in the center. That does not stop me. And so I will continue with the basic principle here of fight for the center and get two pawns out there if we can. Let's bring out the knight. And I'm just kind of going for the, the ultimate setup here. Both pawns, both knights, both bishops out right away. Okay. Um, let's go bishop to f4. And next, okay, g5. All right, so let's go back. And, you know, when your opponent plays like this, what you have to understand is that they have long-term weaknesses. So you don't necessarily need to do anything immediately to, like, try to make them pay for that. But just over the course of the game, you want to think about those things. So, like, for example, whichever side our opponent decides to castle, if they decide to castle, there's going to be weaknesses around the king because of these pawns. So there's this long-term idea the king might not be safe, right? Now, the other side of that coin is black does have options. Let's just say, for example, I castle over here. Black has the option to keep pushing these pawns forward and attack my king. They have the option to, at any moment, chase my knights away, right? So there's a trade-off, and you have to keep that in mind. So, like, for example, right now, one, two, one, two. So based on what I just said, do I need to be concerned about this? The answer is yes, maybe I do, right? Because if g4 happens, I might lose a pawn. Now maybe I can play knight to e5. And that looks like a way to not lose a pawn, but if black plays d6 first and then g4, that could definitely happen. So that's kind of what you want to think about. So I, what I'm looking at now is the move d5. And it kind of is related to what I just talked about. Another way to deal with the pressure on that d4 pawn would be to move it. But I'm also noticing that this knight doesn't really have central squares that it can go to. If I play d5 and it moves here, guess what? One, two, only one defender. Or if it moves here, one, two, only one defender. So whenever you can kick a knight away and it can't go to the center, that might be a clue that, hey, that might be a pretty good move. So if it has to go to like the side of the board, that could be bad. Or if it has to go kind of back where it came from, that could be bad. So I think I will play d d5 because of everything that we talked about okay and it puts black in a tough spot of okay where do you move your knight to so let's see what they're going to do and then we will continue from there and after this i'll probably just bring my okay so they did try to go to the center which normally would be a good move if you could do it but we've got it covered we have two pieces and so they're actually just losing a piece so there we go and we'll take it back. Okay, whenever you see the move f6, what does it weaken? It weakens two things, this diagonal and this diagonal. So which of those can I take advantage of in this position? Not this one, but I do have queen h5. And that looks like a great move. It's almost checkmate. It's almost checkmate. There is an escape square. Uh, but I'm still going to play it because taking away castling rights is significant. And it also puts my queen in an aggressive square, right? And if black's not careful, um, if I can figure out a way to get a piece here, I can checkmate black. Now, do I have an easy way to do that, to control this? Bishop c4, but no, because it would get captured. And also my pawn's in the way. Can I get my knight to defend? It would have to be on one of these squares. Not really. So I'm not going to have an immediate checkmate, it doesn't look like. Um, and so that's, you know, unfortunate, but what I will do is just save my bishop. So I'm going to go back to D4 and keep it centralized if possible, um, because I like these diagonals here and I don't see an easy way that black can attack it, right? If black could, oh, well, <laughs> that is a move, but it opens up, uh, for en passant, right? And so that's what I'm going to do. We'll capture there. 
Learn about this move. What is this move? Never seen this before. Okay, so every time somebody moves, what is what changes about the position, right? Here we go. Queen's attacking my bishop. So how do I want to deal with that? Move it, counterattack, or defend. Um, bishop check is definitely an idea, and I've got the 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 diagonal pieces here kind of crisscrossing. Looks pretty good. King could still escape. Defending rook to d1 or even castling looks actually amazing. Why? Because I want to castle anyway. I want to develop and I want to castle. I have one more piece to develop and I still need a castle. So if I can castle and defend my bishop and create a discovered attack, that's a win-win. And here we go. We're going to get the opportunity to put it into action and win the queen. So bishop c5 check. And now you see the power of the discovered attack, right? The rook is going to be able to capture the queen next move. So black is in trouble here. Uh, probably can run with the king, but then they lose the queen. Or they can block with the queen, but we're going to just simply take it. And now we're kind of seeing, you know, what I said earlier about the, the weaknesses on, on the king side. Now we're seeing it uh, in play over here. All right. Let's play one more game for this series. We're at 325. All right. A 385. Okay. Oh, they didn't want to play us. All right. Let's go for a new 10 minute. 388. So here we go. Let's try to get two pawns in the center. They stopped us. So we will bring out the knight to support those squares. All right. Let's go ahead. We'll play this one more time. Um, maybe I'll start switching up the openings later. But yeah, for, I think for now we'll play this again. Lining up on this diagonal, it's a very good opening at this, I mean, this level, even several hundred rating points higher, you can still play this. It's very, very good. And I think we will, let's try it again to go for the fried liver. So the basic threat is the fork. Really, they have to play d5 or if they know the tracks are bishop c5, which I don't, I don't expect we're going to see that very often at this level. Okay, yeah, d5. So we take it. And like I've explained previously, um, if they take with the knight, we're going to sacrifice here to set up. Okay, that's a move um, that I don't know that I've seen before. So and I guess it kind of makes sense. They are saving their knight and they're also threatening to take this. Um, I have an idea. And my idea is to push here and potentially go for the fork. Now, there is an, an opening trap that I've covered on the channel where they play knight to d4. And when white tries to do this, you actually take with the queen. You allow them to do that. You sneak the queen over here. And there's this crazy checkmate that black has. So I'm thinking, like, do I have to worry about that? And I don't think I do. Why not? Well, because the knight is back here instead of up here. So I think that's a significant difference. So if this happens, I think I would go for this. Probably would take the rook or something, or maybe just check with the bishop. Looks pretty good. So yeah, d6, I think, is a solid move to set up the attack here. So we will play that. Um, and that's a bit advanced, you know, the tr the opening theory and the trap from the other video. And so don't really worry about that. That's not a, a big deal. Basically, what I'm doing is, is setting up a, th a threat. And it was a tricky one to see, right? Like when you push a pawn forward like that, most players are focusing on the pawn. And they forget about, oh, there's also a bishop behind there. So now I have a question of which way should we take this? Which way should we take this? Well, this one looks obviously pretty good because the queen's going to probably have to move. We take a rook. Can't really complain about that. However, this one also looks good. It's almost checkmate, forces the king to run. And that also looks really good. Now, one thing I want to point out here, this is this is um, a little bit more advanced. but if we take here with the knight and black moves the queen to c7, tax the bishop, and if I take the rook with my knight and black takes this with the queen, black gets a bishop, three points. I would get a pawn and a rook, so six points, but my knight is stuck in the corner. And if black is able to play, let's say, g6 and bishop here and take my knight, Black would get six points. It's kind of an even trade, but actually a knight and the bishop's a little better than a rook and a pawn. So because of that line, I think I might not go for the fork. 
And now, is my opponent going to see all that? Very unlikely, right? But I'm just telling you guys, you know, if I was playing against a, a stronger player, I probably would, would not take it that way. And so I will go ahead and take with the bishop. And, you know, just focus on the fact that, okay, now I have the king on d7 that I can attack and hopefully checkmate or whatever the case may be, right? So let's go ahead and castle. My king is safe. Uh, Black's king is not. And now I'm probably going to try to open up the king somehow. A move like d4 is what I want to play. Actually, I might even play d4 right now like and give up my piece. Why? Because then I would follow up with this. And I'm attacking the knight. I'm also threatening checkmate here. Seems like a very powerful move. Now, do I have to give up my knight? No, I don't have to. But uh, sometimes when you're attacking, that's the best thing to do. Don't worry about your pieces so much. And just keep the pressure on the king. So I think that's what we will do here. All right, so here we go. And now black has an issue of how do you defend both of these? You could move here, but that's only going to be a temporary solution. That's going to be an easy knight to attack, right? You can move here. Um, but again, I don't think that quite does it. I can trade and then take. I can even just take and allow the knight to go there because it's pinned and then keep bringing out my pieces, bring out my knight, bring out my bishop, something like that. Knight to d5. Okay, it's a good try by my opponent. It's a good try. Um, Unfortunately, it doesn't quite work for them because I can just take it and win back my piece and we keep the pressure up on the king. But I think that's what I'm going to do. I could also take here, but I want to kind of clear these pieces out of the way so that my queen is more effective. And so because of that, I think this is the way to go. Now, one thing that I'm paying attention to here is there is a rook lined up on my king, sort of. If you imagine if black's queen could teleport over here, that would be checkmate. So as I'm calculating through some of this stuff, right, and the queen sneak over there somehow, right? Not, not really right now, but I'm keeping that in the back of my mind. All right, so let's go ahead and take this. And we'll take with the queen. And we still have a very nice attack going on the king and our position is looking great. So we have threats to do this, to take here, to develop and continue to, to pile on. Okay, not a bad move by our opponent, bringing in the queen to, to defend. So, you know, basic obvious moves would be just continue developing. Um, can't go wrong with there. You also, in positions like this, you want to start looking for specific tactics. So specific captures, specific checks, specific things that you can do that will force so something to happen, right? So like, for example, taking here. Is that a, is that a trade that I want to make? Or taking with the queen. takes takes, takes. Um, that's an option, right? Like I, if we count up the pawns, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pawns against one, two, three, four, five. So if I'm able to trade this off and go into an end game, I'm going to have more pawns, which is probably a good thing. However, when your opponent's king looks like this, it's probably not the best to trade. You probably want to go for checkmate or keep attacking. Okay. So with that in mind, I'm not going to force a queen trade and do this. I'm going to look for ways to keep attacking. So what are those options? Uh, bringing a rook to the center is always a good option. So that's some options. Knight to c3. Bishop takes g5. Doesn't quite look good enough to sacrifice this because even after the queen moves, bishop also defends that pawn. So I wouldn't be able to follow it up. So I'm not going to give up my bishop. Um, I think rook to d1 makes a lot of sense because it pins the pawn. So like it's pretty clear to me black is trying to take this with their queen, which is, which is a good move, right? But if I pin this, and they try to do that, guess what? I take it, right? Because the pawn is out of the, the picture at that point. So I think with all that kind of thought about, I will play rook to d1. And it's a it's a developing move in a sense. It, it brings the rook into the game, also supports my queen, creates a battery, which is very powerful, and pins the pawn and prevents the capture. So it's, it's another one of those moves that accomplishes a bunch of things at once, checks all the boxes kind of, and I think we're doing great. Okay, so our opponent does not uh, notice the f the pin there with the rook, and so we can take the queen for free. So our opponent was doing some pretty good moves if this wasn't here, but because it is, we simply take it. It's a free queen. And by the way, uh, remember that checkmate that I was talking about, right? It almost did happen, right? If I were to, for whatever reason, you know, try to defend my queen or something instead, could have that could have happened, right? So anyway. Um, 
Okay. So I'm looking for specific tactics. Do I want to take this? Do I want to take, no, probably not. This is defended. I could throw in a check, but does that really help me? Not really. Um, I could take this or I could bring my knight out. Let's go ahead and take the pawn. It's a free pawn. It's also developing a piece, which I would want to do anyway. So I think that makes a lot of sense. Okay. Pins my, my bishop. Decent move there by my opponent. Um, I'm not super concerned because if they take me, I take them. They can't take me because of the pin. And so I think what I'm gonna do is just develop a piece and uh, keep getting all the pieces into the game. Even when you're ahead, I wanna keep following those principles of finishing your development and using all your pieces. And I, I'm scanning for like checkmates and stuff, but I just don't see one right now. Like I can't go here because the bishop, right? I just don't see a checkmate immediately. And so that's kind of the fallback option. If you don't see any tactics, you bring in more pieces. So here we go. Okay, so it might not look like a powerful move, but there's something very important about this move, right? What's the, the big thing? My queen that I've been leaving sit here is now under attack, right? So the pin is gone, okay? And this is a detail that would be very easy to overlook, you know, um, but I'm not going to let that happen. I need to save my queen. So what are we gonna do? Move the queen? A defend or counterattack? Well, it can't really defend this in this scenario. <laughs> Lose the queen. Um, so I could move it. But I think I want to counterattack. I think I want to bring my knight in with a, with a check and maybe just take that pawn. And we'll see what black's going to do. But that looks like the best option. So you don't always have to retreat. I remember to look for those counterattacks as well. So here we go. Knight to b5. Looks like a good opportunity. And uh, now we have one, two, three attackers on the pawn. Only two defenders, and so I am going to be able to capture that with knight. Uh, maybe even with the rook, depending on, on where the king goes and what I'm trying to accomplish. I might be willing to sacrifice my rook for the bishop so that the queen and knight could potentially deliver the checkmate. Okay, so yeah, let's see. Um, we could take with the knight, looks good. We could take with the rook, looks good. Um, I don't know if it really matters. I'll take with the knight. I don't see an immediate checkmate, but it's going to be very soon. I can just feel it kind of because of the, the way the king is and the knight and the queen uh, and rook very strong together. So we'll see what black's going to do, and then we'll probably look for a checkmate. I mean, I already see this idea of going here and bringing the queen in. Um, okay, not a bad move by black, actually, because if I try to go with the check with my knight now, my queen would be captured potentially. So if like if I go here... Black would simply take my queen. So that's a pretty pretty nice move by our opponent. I guess we'll just take the rook in this in this case. So we are at that two minute mark. So I wanna remind myself, hey, don't think too long. Just kinda of make some, some obvious moves. Okay, here's an obvious move. I'm not gonna overthink it. I'm not gonna take a chance that I lose this game on time when I don't need to, right? Play good, safe moves. You shouldn't have a problem. And again, I'm gonna start kinda of scanning for checkmates and whatnot especially when it's my opponent's turn and their time is ticking down, I can use this to uh, to my advantage. So I'm thinking of bringing the queen here to line up on the king, thinking about capturing here, thinking about also bringing this other rook into the game, maybe somewhere like this. Even bringing the rook down here or over here. A lot of options. Let's see what black is going to do first. Okay, so again, let's kind of start scanning for those checkmating opportunities. Um, I don't see it immediately there. It's funny that, that his king has just got all these little escape squares. So in those cases, when you don't see it and you're, you know, your time is, is running down, don't panic. Just play an obvious move and let the game continue. Like just let the game continue to develop, right? Like you don't have to always find it. So in this case, I don't see it. So rather than like sitting here for, you know, a minute and a half trying to find it. And then I have like 10 seconds and I lose on time. I just played a move, right? Here, I'm just going to play a move. Like push my pawn up here and use my rook. Is it the right idea? Maybe not. Buckfish probably sees mate in two or three, I'm sure. But I don't want to lose on time. So I'm going to make a practical decision to just make a move, right? That's totally, another practical decision could have been push this pawn and get a queen. Like that's okay. You don't always have to be a hero and find the crazy checkmate, just win the game, right? Just win the game. So here's another example. There might be a checkmate here. I'm not even gonna worry about it. 
just going to go for the obvious queen check. Brings the queen closer to the king. And keep the game moving along. Okay? Again, here we go. Keep the game moving along. Now, it, it helps that my opponent's not really like, threatening anything. It makes it easier on me, right? Like, if they were, like, attacking stuff with their bishop and their rook, it might be a different story. I'd have to think a little bit about, like, okay, let me be careful. Am I going to get checkmated? Um, one other thing that I like to do is, like, ask myself the question, is there any way possible I could lose this game? Like, something crazy happens. What could it be? What do you guys think the answer to that? There is one thing that could happen in this game. What do you guys think that could be? Well, I'll go ahead and tell you, it's a back rank checkmate. So look at my king. Look at these pawns. I'm just imagining some scenario where black like takes here and I, even here, let's say I bring my rook up and somehow the king escapes and the rook at some point comes over and down here and checkmates, checkmates. Like that's the only way that I could potentially lose. So sometimes what I'll do in, in games like this is I'll play a move like this. It's not a good move. Trust me. There's, there's a checkmate here, I'm sure. But by playing this move, I'm guaranteeing that I won't lose the game to a back rank checkmate because I can always move my king here. Now, it's important that I played this pawn and not this pawn. If I would have played this pawn, this bishop could actually come down here and I could still get back rank checkmated. But the point is, uh, eliminate those possibilities of you losing, right? Just eliminate them. And it just makes the game easier and, and you know you don't take as much risk. So just something to, to think about. Okay. Now I am going to look for checkmate. Um, and I guess it's, oh, it's, I think it's right here. There you go. All right. So uh, hopefully that was helpful. I think we're going to end it here. We're at 334. So still, uh, you know, beginner level, lots of blunders and, and, and hanging pieces and stuff. But hopefully you're still learning from that. And we're going to keep going, like I said, until we get to 2200. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Stay sharp. Play smart. Take care.